Hey, what's up guys? This is Abe Foy from freelearner.how. So er, uh, in our last video, Eric was going through, is solar right from my house? And it got me wondering, as a solar professional, a guy who teaches solar, is solar right for me? Well, the answer is, of course it is. I want solar. Um, but um, uh, I'm also a teacher. I don't make a, a whole uh, incredible amount of money, but I do pretty well for myself. Um, and I uh, want solar also on my house. So I went through and I went through the process that everybody else does. I go through the solar contractors here in Oregon and I found out um, uh, what we can, you know, if we could get it. And the answer was, yes, we can. So I have a video coming out very shortly. Uh, once we get through the install process, we make sure that everything is here, um, uh, that uh, we're going to go through start from finish how our solar system worked and i'm super excited about it. i've been wanting to have this for you know 10 10 plus years but i just haven't been able to do it so uh, i wanted to cut to the chase and uh, give you one of the things that uh, i thought was really interesting so i was going through my pv design that uh, elemental energy sent out to me thank you very much elemental you guys are amazing uh, if you guys uh, use elemental uh, say abe foy sent them to you and they will uh, hook you up with, um, you know, 200 to, uh, more dollars on um, uh, on your solar install. And it gives me a little bit of a cut on mine, too. So please do that. OK, anyways. Um, so you'll notice here up at the top that I am going to get a 7.36 kilowatt system. Uh, that's my peak power. And it has an out rated output of 5.52 AC. Well, if you do the math on that, uh, well, let's do the math on that. You know, we always know that our AC should be equal to our DC. And so originally I was like, whoa, what's going on here? You know, the, there's something very uh, wrong going on. Oop, wrong direction. Uh, 5.52 divided by 7.36. Uh, and so we're losing about 25% of the energy uh, from the system. And I was really concerned i was like whoa what, what's happening you know um uh, we don't generally see this when doing uh string designs and so uh it got it, you know got me a little concerned of like what do we have to do so um uh, so i wanted to uh show you guys a little bit what's going on here so the system size we're looking for i told you uh the ac side actually is rated at 4.95 the 5.52 is actually a nec um 25 percent gain on there and then we have the 23 uh, i'm getting 23 um uh pv modules at roughly 320 uh watts a piece then we have n phase two m250 72s and people are who know in the industry they're like whoa m50 250s those are really old those aren't even are those aren't even iq sixes or iq pluses those are not even iq sevens and we're up to iq seven plus or iq seven a you know why would you get 250s on there well for me the reason is because it was a significant cost savings it was 2300 dollars cheaper to get the um 250s and the guys at elemental they um they helped me uh, out with this and they said you know we have these and we can get you at a pretty good price point and i was like okay well I'll, I'll give it a shot why don't you send it over and i'll take a look but then when i saw 75 percent not 100%, 25% losses, I was like, whoa, I don't think this is going to work. We need to get modules that are closer to the 250 mark, you know, maybe some 285s, and uh, so I can get the maximum amount of efficiency. Uh, and so um, what what's going on here is uh, there's a term in, in our industry called um, um, clipping. So what's happening is that the module is only rated to be able to release around 250 watts of, uh, um, of AC out of the module. And you can have lots of inputs uh, into this thing. You could have up to you know 450 or so. We'll look at the spec sheet here in a minute of, of what that is. But um, what's happened is no matter what the module is doing, it's only going to put out 250. And so... Um, initially you're like oh man i'm paying a lot more for the system than than i really need to so um uh so and i talked to them and they said hey that's normal we design that into the system clipping is something normal that we do um, you don't generally see this a lot of times when you're building uh, string inverter systems 
um, because it's not as apparent. But with microinverter systems, you just see it more. And so the same thing happens on both systems. It's just more apparent on the microinverter system. So I'm going to show you uh, why here in a second. Okay, so I'm over here at Enphase's website. I'm looking at their um, their product categories here, and you see that all of them are ra rated for residential or commercial up to residential. So, and this goes down to the IQ6. So you'll notice that the output voltage is this 12240, which is fine because we're doing residential. And then the input powers, the IQ6 is pretty equivalent to the 250s. I think I can. Yeah, it doesn't show it on here, but it goes 195 to 130s, and then these guys go up to 350 to 460. And if we click on one of these guys, we can actually see what the um, the uh, power output is for these things. So we can look at the spec sheet, and we can see uh, what it what it's designed for. So we'll go. Um, Okay, so right here, it says that the module input, uh, the maximum output is 366 volt amps. Um, that is the equivalent, a volt amp is equivalent to a watt, more or less. And so, um, and our PowerPoint tracking range is 18 to 56. So we looked on our spec sheet for our solar panels, and they're for, about 41 volts uh, for our, um, uh, or actually about 30 uh, 36 volts for the uh, MPPT range and about 41 for the open circuit voltage. So it's like, okay, these inverters work for that. So why wouldn't I take an IQ7A and slap it on one of these other panels? Because I would have, um, with this one, I could get 360 six volt amps out of it versus 320 so the amount of clipping that i would have it would be zero and it so it's like yeah absolutely let's go with this and so uh and if i look at the equivalent of the next one down that i was testing this one uh will put out the iq7 will put out 295 watts or volt amps uh and it operates in the same range and then the one that this is equivalent to the 250s are equivalent to this iq6 original one which is only able to put out uh 250 uh well this one says 240 but it can do 250 uh volt amps and so you're um so you're like man uh I'm going to lose a bunch of power. So, you, so then I look at it, and it's going to cost me $2,300 more, roughly about $100 uh, more uh, per microinverter to be able to upgrade into the new one. And so I have to figure out, like, well, what's the cost savings here? So I went over here to Helioscope, uh, and I created uh, some new models. Um, Unfortunately, it has my address on here, so I, don't, I can't show that to you right now, but I can show you the data that I pulled. And I created three models through Helioscope. Helioscope is a design tool that you can put your PV modules and you can put the exact module you're using, the inverters, what height, elevations, and everything uh, uses um, the NREL PV Watts uh, API to be able to fill it up. And so it uses your data through weather station data over the past hundred years uh, to be able to calculate this stuff. So it's really, really accurate. And so when I took a look at it, uh, here is the IQ7A. Uh, and so uh, the amount of energy production that I'm going to have off of my seven uh, kilowatt system here is it's going to produce roughly about 9200 uh, um, kilowatt hours uh, into the grid uh, per year and uh, if you look at it here it also shows my losses so we have a little bit for ac losses in the inverter um, so we have a little bit of losses here uh, we have some wiring there's mismatch uh, which is real low and the temperature is going to be fairly high because i have a black roof and then the uh, irradiance uh, soiling because they're at soiling is going to happen because it's at um, a really um, uh, low um, angle. Uh, the, this is not a very steep roof, and so I'm also going to get some reflection losses because because of that. But there's no clipping losses, and so that's really great. It's like okay. I know I have no clipping, and so the maximum power potential, and actually, if you look on this chart also, um, the maximum power potential for this is 100% because I have no shading happening. So this is no shading, no clipping. This is a really good site. It's my house. Uh, so I'm going to get a maximum of 9282. So we're going to put that in the calculator down here. We're going to say, okay, so the maximum is 9282. 
Okay, so that's the benchmark that we want. And then uh, I'm gonna open up the other document here uh, to be able to show you uh, the other side. So I'm gonna, uh, so here's my, uh, my next one. So this one is using the 250s. So using the Enphase 250s, and we look at the stuff and we see temperature is the same, soiling's the same, reflection's the same, but look at that. The clipping is only 0.1%. So what is clipping? Um, clipping is what happens when, um, um, what am I trying to say here? Uh, when you make an excess of power that the inverter isn't able to handle. And so what it does is it clips off that energy. So let's say that I made 300 watts um, in that minute or let's say in an hour I made 300 watt hours and it's only able to output at 250 watt hours or 240 watt hours, I would lose 50 to 60 watt hours out of, out of that time period. And so for the entire year, I'm only losing 0.1%. Well, how can that be? Because my, my system size is, is seven, you know, seven point, forgot 7.75 kilowatts and then the other one is uh 5.5 kilowatts or in the ac side is five kilowatts so i should be losing 25 percent and then i look at the um uh some of the graphs that they have uh, on end phase and i look at their um charts that they did near colorado and it shows that based on those i was able to extrapolate and it's a little bit better it's but it's still losing about 14 percent and i'm like man something's not right here and it dawned well it didn't dawn on me but this is something we've talked about but i've been able to like realize it here in person is that uh what's going on is that the five kilowatts is the maximum power at that time and the 7.75 is the maximum power at that time also but because the roof is heating up on a black roof the voltage goes down which means the power goes down and then when the voltage goes up the power goes up but the irradiance is not as intense so it means that during the cold winter months when i'm getting this energy production um uh, i'm getting a slight boost in voltage because it's colder out and but the light isn't there to be able to bring it up and during the summer months because it's going on a black roof the heat from the roof is actually losing 8.4% of the solar system uh, energy. So if I really wanted to, you know, increase the efficiency of the system, I should probably put them, you know, a little raised off the roof or potentially even um, put white under the roof to be able to cool it down a little bit. Um, so, so this uh isn't actually an issue and so what was really interesting about this is over the entire year i was able to save a certain amount of energy if i use this bigger inverter so let's find out how much that that difference is so it looks like i have 9282 and 9282 that's the number so we're gonna go 91 and we'll round this up to 94 uh minus 9282. So that's about 88 watt hour or 88 kilowatts is what my savings is. So if we take 88 kilowatts and we multiply that times about 12 and a half cents for our area, um, that gives us $11 a year in savings. So if I upgrade and I spend $2,300 more, I'll be able to save $11 because the clipping losses is is just not existent in over here at least in our climate so if we divide that out we go twenty three hundred dollars uh we whoops so twenty three hundred dollars divided by eleven dollars in savings um that's going to take me 209 years to be able to pay off that um that more expensive inverter so the answer that came back to them was hey Great job on designing this, guys. Uh, I I was not really thinking that that's how it was going to be, and I'm in the industry. So they're really doing you guys a really good service. Um, this isn't necessarily a plug for them, but um, it's a really interesting thing that could throw a lot of you off. Um, uh, in this case, it doesn't make sense to be able to upgrade to the more expensive inverter when the less expensive one works just fine. Because in our area, it is cloudy uh, and uh, the roof 
will get hot and when it's not cloudy out anyways. And so both with between both of those two scenarios, um, we're just not going to uh, save a, a whole ton of energy here. So anyways, uh, I hope you guys found that this was interesting. Feel free to uh, reach out to me. Make sure to comment below, uh, subscribe and like below. If you guys notice that our um, channel uh, doesn't have a lot of subscribers right now, we actually uh, just uh, move to a new channel um and uh so but so we we want more people <laughs> so anyways like and subscribe down below uh we sure we sure like you and uh we're gonna have another video coming out here in just a little bit that describes uh the installation of this and the whole process that we went through so thanks so much take care